We have here Ryan Thomas, and uh, this is Som from Photojournalism Hub, and uh, we are here to talk about Ryan's new book and the themes it covers and the inspirations of it. So yeah, everything will kill you. I guess that's been the dark sub theme of the last couple of years. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, Ryan, where uh, where did the images or they are, the first question I would rather have is like, what is where did the title of this book come from? Was it the images that inspired it, or did you um, so the title of the book actually is a is an interesting story. So um, uh, one of our close friends of our family, uh, he, they have a picture on the wall um, with the rugby player getting tackled, and in on the on the picture it says, "Everything will kill you, so choose something fun." Um, and I've kind of taken the inspiration from that um, quote and I've used the themes from the book to kind of create this title uh, in a way. So uh, the title of the book is Everything Will Kill You, so choose something proactive. But um, on the cover, you can see that fun has been spray painted over and the word proactive has been spray painted on in a way, um, almost yeah. like a protester. The book kind of came together. Um, as I started to finish my 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 master's degree um, in the last few months, purely just because I'd accumulated so much work uh, covering protests and and other demonstrations over the years in both the UK, the US, and um, France as well. Um, but during my MA, the one of the major components of my dissertation essay was that. Um, we experience these protests in a sublime nature. So essentially what we're looking at isn't necessarily beautiful, but it is it, it does create this awestruck experience for us. And in the, at the beginning of the book, I also kind of lay out the context for, for the work as well. Um, yeah. And I explain that, you know, I've covered uh, a range of different political and um, like ideologies and different standpoints from all over and trying to merge all those together in a way because you know you'll have one side of the argument and you'll have another side and it's kind of bringing all those together in a way um, as well and I think for me anyways the book doesn't necessarily have to have any sort of context as to where or when the, the photos take place I hope they can almost be timeless in a way but the work in this book and photographing protests essentially is um sort of way of showing people that th there's this sort of uh world that exists separate from the news um you know getting these compositions that you might not see on tv or or see on social media um I think that for me is something I um sort of encourage or enjoy about the book um, is showing people these things that are happening that they may not see otherwise. Yeah. Um, and I think I, I shoot really wide angle for a lot of my work as well. Um, I used to shoot 28 and then I shifted to 24 mil and then I, I've most of my work now is shot on 20. 
So I shoot very wide and I get very close because I like to get very immersed in the, into what's going on. Um, and that for me is quite important. So um, I wouldn't say I have any sort of connection maybe to any particular protest, but it's more about um, showing people um, what is happening and sort of being part of history. And if that makes sense. So yeah, in regards to that, I was, um, you spoke about wide angle and like you spoke about yeah. your technical choices for the, how, how far does the choice of color and black and white play into your work? Or does um, it any... Yeah, that's a good question. So um, I, I started out shooting a lot with color um, and then I kind of discovered, or I didn't discover black and white, but I kind of explored with it a little bit and kind of test it out and see what kind of photos work best. But um, I think a lot of it kind of comes down to, um, I don't think I'd say I'd have any personal preference between the two, but I do believe that some images definitely work better in black and white. Yeah. Um, uh, the cover, for example, is a black and white image of police officers, in, if I can actually, there we go. Yeah. Uh, police officers in Paris. And I just thought that the, the shadows of the, there we go. I just thought the shadows of the book itself, or the, of the police officers, the silhouettes, um, just worked really well in black and white, for example. Um, but I really quite like the vibrance and the, the colorful aspect of it, because um, it kind of fits that sublime theme that I'm kind of going for sometimes. So this book, uh, this page, sorry, um, is a couple of pictures that I took when I was in Arizona. It was on uh, January 6th during the electoral vote um, to swear in uh, Joe Biden. Yeah. Um, and people gathered at the Capitol in Phoenix um, to kind of show their outrage towards um, the ballot um, for what they saw was undemocratic. Um, the first picture on the left was actually completely candid. Um, I got it as I was kind of walking by and I quickly stopped, took the picture and um, you can actually see that I've actually shot it with flash as well. So I probably got his attention, but um, yeah, I just thought I saw his t-shirt and I'm like, I have to get a picture of that. It's pretty, uh, pretty uh, interesting, you know? Um, and obviously in America, you know, guns are very, yeah. people are very open about their carrying firearms. So, it was one of those protests that I've I, I've never been to one before like this because the majority of the people walking around were walking around with assault rifles and handguns and huge knives and growing and having lived in the UK for so long. Um, not used to that. I am not used to that. Even even though I grew up in the states, yeah, I've seen people with guns, but I've never been around that many people collectively <laughs> with with guns and. It was just uh, it was a it was an experience to say the least. And um, the the two photos on the right, you can see the guy on the top carrying um, an assault rifle, uh, and he's obviously got a handgun on his hip as well, and a couple clips. And um, I just thought the composition between the two pictures was very similar as well. Yeah. You, on the top photo, you've got the this picture with a capital on it, and the stripes of the American flag. And then on the bottom, you've got the, the Trump flag on the left. Yeah. Um, and I just thought they kind of worked well together. Um, so these ones were also shot in Arizona. Um, so the pictures here uh, were shot at, and I think it was, it was an anti-abortion protest, um, which is actually pretty relevant now because considering um, the current laws that have been passed here in the United States. And um, a lot of people here were gathering. Um, you had a lot of uh, Christian um, people showing up, uh, preaching. Um, you had, um, uh, I think the people on the bottom left pictures are actually Orthodox. Um, you had guest speakers speaking. And um, you, I also, they also had a guest speaker who showed up who was a member of the NRA which is the National uh, Rifle Association, um, which 
it was quite an interesting concept to have someone who was promoting guns but was also pro-life um so I, I i think there's a picture of him somewhere in the book as well so um definitely can see that as well but the three pictures here anyways i this is one of those times i thought they looked really great in black and white because it was quite um a great setting to have it um the top left picture particularly i thought it was quite an emotional picture because you've got this man praying um as he's listening to the speaker and i just thought it worked really well um and then the photo on the right uh, you can see this man with a jesus christ wins t-shirt holding his child um yeah so the picture here is uh, it's a full spread um and the reason why I decided to go with the the layout of leaving one of the pages blank is because up until this point the the book was very image heavy so I kind of wanted to space it out a little bit um but the picture on the left was shot in Paris and um the this is actually one of my favorite pictures from the book because you get a lot of different elements within the the image itself that I think are quite interesting so um, sort of in the middle, you see the two, or on the right, sorry, you've got these two men um, throwing um, stones or tiles at uh, police, at riot police, um, who are just ahead of them. And you've got um, a couple of journalists on the left running away because um, tear gas had been thrown and bottles were flying everywhere. And it was just unorganized chaos in a way. Um, and on the sign, you can see ACAB, which um, stands for All Cops or Bastards. I just thought that kind of suited the image itself. But the reason for that image, I find, is one of my more favorites out of, the, out of all the rest is simply because it kind of fits that sublime um, sort of um, theme that I'm going for in a way. And... Um, I've, that's another image that I've been told that kind of almost looks like a painting in a way because there's so much going on, but you know, you almost couldn't imagine it at some point. So, um, you know, like I said earlier, I think for me anyways, the book is a way of showing people these things that you may not see on social media or on the news. Um, and so I just, that's kind of what draws me towards these, these kind of, uh, photos as opposed to let's say a photo story or a or an installation or something like that like what made you choose the uh, a book as a medium so actually i i actually did a, an installation so i i I've, i did that alongside my book so okay. um yeah the so to finish up my my master's degree we had to do an exhibition um and I decided that I wanted to also do a book to go along with it because I wanted a physical, um, I wanted something physical to give to people to have um, of my work. Um, and I wanted to share these, these images beyond a, an exhibition. Um, and so for my exhibition, anyways, of this work, uh, I, I felt very, experimental with with the exhibition itself so what i actually ended up doing was i used billboard and fly poster paper uh, to print the images and um there uh, what you tend to see on the street is uh posters promoting any sort of protest or demonstration and um, using wallpaper paste they just paste them up in a very uh, cost effective way and uh, that's what I did for my exhibition is I printed, you know, around 100 to 100, I think it was like 100 pictures, something like that. It was, it was a lot of photos. Um, and I printed them on, yeah, repro print. It's a, it's a service where they do like lots of prints and it's a much more cost effective way than doing fine art prints. Okay. And I just felt that that's, that worked with the uh, the images a lot better than if I was to get them printed on really fine art paper yeah and um I've got in bit and you know I kind of tile them up to make it kind of look sort of like not a too street wall say again I, I thought uh you're saying like like a busy street wall 
like, yeah 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 like exactly like that yeah um not not too straight or formal but very yeah. you know smack it up and yeah. paste it on kind of kind of idea um and it worked very well you know i i had a lot of great feedback on it and um it it felt great to have something to experiment that worked very well and i've got ambitions to to do an installation like that again uh very soon but with with the what i want to do with the work in the future is i kind of want to distress the images in a way so some of the pictures have fire some of them um have elements of broken glass so i kind of want to utilize those aspects of distressing the images when i when I, if I was to put them on the wall again yeah um and perhaps maybe rip them up a little bit in certain ways to make them look uh aesthetically nice obviously but um, in a way, it kind of gives them that protesting sort of look in a way. And um, I've also been in contact with people who I know um, do graffiti and who uh, do spray painting because um, I would like them to do some sort of spray painting on the installation itself as well as if it was a busy street wall. Yeah. Um, and I just think that those elements together would be really great for the work. And um, it's something I'm very excited to 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 expand on later in the future so so um i self-published um i printed out uh about 30 copies in the first batch and those went pretty quick way quicker than i thought they were going to go considering it was it's basically my first book that i've i've um i've self-published and they're available on my website over at ryanthomasphotography.com um, you can go to you, the category or page um, order book, and those are available there. They are currently going for, I believe, twenty pounds on my website. How do you balance the your personal politics uh, or personal political identity as a human being while you're on the field, while you're in yeah. such politically and you know socially tense situations? Yeah. So. Yeah, that's a great question. So in the time that I've uh, photographed, um, I've been I've been assaulted in the past. I've had, you know, um, simply just for taking people's pictures, not even necessarily expressing a political idea. Um, I've I've been verbally abused. I've been um, nearly ganged up on in the past. You know, it's it can be very tense, uh, hostile environments that you go into. Um, and I found that um simply not saying anything at all to people because you know you never know which way you're going to rub someone um you can rub somebody the wrong way by saying something so essentially the majority of the time if i to try and um, balance my political views i just try and do my my job to take really good pictures do you prefer to do things in a very sort of objective almost um editorial reporter sort of way or is there a certain element of uh personal political expression involved okay yeah cool um so the majority of the times i um, when i go through my edits i will I'll, more than likely I'll, I'll choose an image that i find is particularly more exciting um i i, I find that if i try and um try and uh, what's the word objectively choose images too much um it can kind of drive away people from that work um so most of the time i just choose the images that are simply m uh, more exciting to look at or or fit the sort of the overall theme of what's going on um to to kind of give everything a balance if that makes sense if i am sharing it on social media I like I said earlier, I, I like I want people to look at the work and and just be kind of almost awestruck by what's happening and to see. And obviously, because I think this comes down to my my technical aspect of shooting wide as well. Um, I find that I, I see everything in a wide angle and, um, you know, by getting up close, you're you're getting immersed into what's going on. So, um, you know that's how I, I kind of gauge the, the the excitement of what's going on. But yeah, I, I wouldn't say there's any sort of political um, uh, aspects as to 
to how I choose my images. I think, um, you know, the work itself kind of is just as it is, you know, I, I just choose the most exciting work and, and let people kind of decide as to how they feel about it, you know? Yeah, the, the majority of the book is simply just images from, from the last four or five years of me photographing protests. And um, it's my sort of way of exploring, you know, different political standpoints and getting immersed in them and, and showcasing different um, ends of the spectrum because I, I don't like focusing on just one or the other. I like to focus on a, on a range of different ideas and, um, you know, for other people to see how one group reacts or how another reacts, um, I think is quite important, um, especially in a day and age when there's so many different polarizing ideas. But I don't, I don't like to go too heavy on, on necessarily the the political aspects. It's, it for me, anyways. It I wanted to focus on the sublime out aesthetic elements of it. I think alone. Um, like I said earlier, I think you could easily look at some of these protests and they could be timeless in a way, um, purely just because maybe maybe not this page. I think this page is a sort of once in a lifetime kind of thing that happened. Um, but, you know, something like that, for example, you know, that's been, you know, that can happen in any country at any time, you know. So, yeah, I mean, it, it started you know, the, the first couple of pages, anyways, they, they start out um, with my first protest that I went to, and that was a Brexit protest in, I don't think I've sent you that one, but let's see if I can, can you see it? Uh, yeah, I see it now. Yeah, so that's the first page, um, and it was shot at a Brexit. Could you um, just put it up uh, again oh, yeah. for a second? Yeah. Oh, can I get there? We go. Yeah, I got it. yeah. So those pictures were shot at a Brexit protest back in, I believe, 2018. Um, and it, I don't know what inspired me to to go take pictures at a protest. I think it was one of my close friends who's from London. Um, and. I just saw his his pictures at some of these protests in London, and I just thought because I I had started out photographing drum and bass events here in in the UK. Yeah. Um, I say here in the UK. I'm in Arizona right now, but um, I started out taking pictures at drum and bass events in the UK, and it was something about the energy um, and the emotion of like these this emotion that you you can capture in this like split second. Yeah. Um, when either the music drops or when you get a group of people who are heavily under the influence, I just think you just get these these very like chaotic emotional expressions. And I just I just was very interested by that from the get go. Um, and so I saw my one of my friends um, pictures of somebody pointing kind of almost like a gun finger at a police officer at this protest in London. Yeah. And I was just I was just blown away by like how how like the aesthetic of the, or the composition of the picture was just, you know, I just you couldn't make it up, you know, and yeah. And um so I, that's kind of what spurred this this kind of desire to go to protests and and whatnot. But you know, over the years you do get the ones that are a little bit more active than the others. Um and I think to 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 gauge the ones that are a bit more exciting than the other ones, it's it kind of comes down to um, something that's happened very recently because people's emotions are like a switch sometimes, and yeah. that's when you get those really active, sort of passionate um, um, protesters who go out and maybe are a little bit more active and um, kind of are uh, maybe against the police a little bit more or against the whatever and they tend to cause a little bit more disruption yeah. um, so those ones are a little bit more spontaneous so you know over the years you you know you, by the time you keep going to each one even like the small ones have the potential to be um quite quite different than another you know so 
Yeah. It's important to go to all of them, really, for me. So, yeah. But I feel like, especially through your images, and given the diversity of uh, geographies or ideas mm -hmm. that it covers, uh, it, I, I, what I feel is very interesting about the work is that it points out not only the similar, like not only the differences in protests yeah. of like different scales and ideas, but also the sort of uh, common similarity or almost like a common language yeah. in, in the protests themselves. Yeah, definitely. So like in given all of the protests that you've been to, what do you, what would you say about um, the similarity or the differences you've seen or, you, or that the ones that you've tried to sort of um, communicate through your work? Yeah, so um, here I'll show you. Um, I don't know if I sent you this one, but um, so you can see in that image, the the picture on the left is I'm sorry, a picture. the uh, the image cut out with the blue. Oh, that's okay. So I'll I'll explain it and then I'll show it because it, it'll it might be a little bit easier to do it that way. Um, so the so the image I'll show you now it's two pictures. Um, one was taken at a Black Lives Matter protest in Phoenix, and the other one was shot at a pro-Trump um, slash Blue Lives Matter yeah. um, protest. Um, so it's actually quite interesting because the compositions are effectively very similar. So on the first picture, you've got a man holding a gun right under his right under his arm. Yeah. And it's got the American flag with a blue line going through it, which represents blue um, um, support for police officers. Yeah. And the the picture of the Black Lives Matter picture is a picture of um, a woman holding a sign under her arm um, with Anthony. It says, rest in peace, Anthony Peanut Cano, who was a 17 year old who was shot by a police officer in Phoenix. And I just thought those two polarizing um, sort of ideas and the composition together kind of brought those two ideas together in a way. And yeah. it kind of sh and it kind of shows that despite um, these different ideas, you can you can find compositions and and themes that are very similar between the two subjects. Yeah. So I'll show you the, I'll show you the two pictures now for, to, can, to give you an idea. Yeah. I see what you mean. And yeah, like it, I think it goes back to what you said about the work and how, um, how yeah. it's not really about the idea itself, but the intensity of how people express the chaotic or the sort of repressed um, anger or emotions they have yeah. towards authorities. Yeah. And um, I went to a university in Swansea at uh, University of Wales Trinity St. David's and did my BA in photojournalism and documentary photography um, and then obviously because of the pandemic hit it was a little bit difficult at the time so I ended up just doing my MA as well um, and carrying on this photojournalism or this um, protest work that I was doing at the time so the, the I kind of had an idea for this uh, protest sort of project and the sublime elements from sort of the end of my third year of uh, my BA. Um, and that carried on up until now um, when I just finished my MA last week. So um, these ideas have been spurring on for quite a while now. And um, now that I'm finished with my MA, I've been doing a little bit more editorial work and um, trying to apply for positions uh, with other photo agencies or whatever I can find um, that will allow me to to be able to do photography as a as a profession, um, yeah, I I've just been shortlisted for the Royal Photographic Society here in the or over in the UK as well, which I was very excited to hear about. Um, but yeah, I've also got lots of other uh, exciting projects that I've pursued over the years that aren't just protests, and one of those projects is called um, Helping Keith with His Photography. Um, and essentially what it is, it's um, two years ago, three years ago now, um, I answered an advertisement for um, helping a blind person with DeafBlind UK to learn photography. Um, and 
So over the last three years, I've been helping Keith, who is um, both visually and auditory um, impaired. So he's he's fully blind, but he he can hear just a, he hears a little bit. Um, he, he he struggles to hear. But over the last few years, we've been developing a portraiture project together. Um, of him learning photography in my time with him, um, which is something that I've been very passionate about over the last few years, and it's a project that. Um, I have found a great deal of value in because not only have I been able to help Keith, um, but it's it's given me a great, um, it, it makes me realize just how lucky I am to have my sight because without it, I wouldn't be able to do what I can do as well. So, um, you know, my passion is photography and without being able to see it would make it much more difficult. So. Um, I've really valued my time with Keith and being able to teach him how to how to develop a project um, with the medium of photography without sight. So, well, Ryan, it was a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, it was great. And congratulations on your graduation and the book. Thank you. And uh, we're definitely looking forward to hearing a lot more about the work that you do next. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's been great. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, it's been a real pleasure to talk about my book and to to share it with with everybody. And um, I hope it excites everybody as much as it excites me because um, not only is it a great piece of history to have, but um, aesthetically, I I really hope that it just excites people to hopefully inspire other people to to get into similar work or to do other things, you know, and so, yeah.